our next guest is one of our favorites here at Arise. He's a photographer, a television personality, a filmmaker, and a philanthropist. And he's best known for his roles on hit shows like America's Next Top Model and The Face. And when he's not on either side of the camera, he has time to dedicate himself to the fight against childhood AIDS. And here today to talk about the Kids for Kids Family Festival is Nigel Barker. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. What Good don't you do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot I don't do. I tr I trust me, trust me. And I, I just feel very lucky that I get the opportunity to work mm. with organizations like the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatrics AIDS Foundation. I mean, you know, there, there's so many great organizations out there and foundations out there. I always say to everyone, find something that, that rings your bell, that moves you, and do it, because it's so rewarding giving back, mm. you know? Well, talk to us about Kids for Kids, Elizabeth Glazer, and how you became involved. Well, I actually got involved through a Kids for Kids event. Now, what the Kids mm. for Kids event is, is essentially a sort of a carnival, fundraising carnival, that the foundation has been throwing now for many, many years. They've raised over $20 million over the past wow. sort of, I think, 10, 15 years doing this one event. Um, and ultimately, it's, it's to inspire children to learn about it and to learn about HIV and to learn about what you know the, the situation in the rest of the world because if you look at what's happening in the rest of the world mm -hmm. when you realize that 700 children are being born every day HIV positive mm -hmm. um, that number is obviously way too big and we need to do something about it but the good news and here's why I love Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS mm -hmm. Foundation is because they've done the research we've got the medicine we know what to do mm -hmm. and in the past 20 years due to the research that the, that the foundation has done they've reduced that number of, of hiv positive cases in america to virtually zero That's like incredible. almost eliminated in the us so we just need to take that same ideology and the same method and the same research and medicine and apply it across you know <laughs> sub-saharan africa and third world countries and it can be, it's doable, you know, mm -hmm. so that's the good news. That and people can, hope. Yeah. Yeah. And people can help out also this weekend. You guys are holding Absolutely. an event at Chelsea Piers. What can people expect and how can they help? This event is it's a lot of fun. It's, we haven't had it for a few years. We've been on hiatus. I'm bringing it back. I became a board member just recently for the foundation. So I, one of the big things I wanted to do was bring back this key event that got me interested in it. Mm -hmm. And we're having it at Chelsea Piers. Like you said, it's called Kids for Kids. You can learn all about it online. But we, we have Olympic athletes who are going to be there. We have my own trainer, who, and who's a, one of three trainers, and they're all going to be there. And they train me. They train Hugh Jackman. Um, they train Olympians. We're all a part of a of a group called the Dog Pound. We're all going to be there <laughs> training. So come and see us in action. Ooh, um, bow, wow. <laughs> bow, wow, exactly. Yeah. We have ball ballet dancers. <laughs> we have Tara Styles, one of the top yoga experts yeah. in the country. She's, they're all going to be there teaching people how to do things, having a lot of fun, doing a bit of exercise, and of course, learning about the foundation too. It's also good food. So nothing, it's something for everyone. All right. Oh, and now, it. if we can't make it though, what's the website where we can help by donating yeah. some funds? It's at the, at the website, Elizabeth Glazer PDF. Patrick's AIDS Foundation's website is um, pedaids.org. Okay. okay. Okay, so let's shift gears and talk about the face. Have you just enjoyed yourself being surrounded by all those glamazons and gorgeous divas? <laughs> I have loved it. I have a hard job. I know, right? Yeah, what? waking up to Naomi. Yeah. Oh, so hard. I come home after. Well, I don't wake up with Naomi. That's all right. Let's oh, just get like, that right. Get in trouble. Hi, sir. Um, that doesn't happen. Um, but go to work. You know, this is how these rumors start. <laughs> but I tell you, coming home at the end I of the day um, and, and telling my wife that I've, you know, had it been ripped arm by arm, you know, limb from limb by supermodels, she looks at me. She goes, yes, honey, you know, your dinner's in the, in the oven, you know, <laughs> so. What have you enjoyed most about working on the face, actually, other than not waking up to Naomi, right. but going to work to see her Well, sometimes we work so late that it feels like I might be waking up with her. Um, I tell you what, the, the fun part of it is, is that it's been a very authentic show. Mm. You know, I've done a lot of work in fashion on TV, and... Um, yeah, you know, a lot of it is, is over-dramatized, you know, but it's still fun and games and all the rest of it. What I love about the face specifically was that it was, it's absolutely real. The critics loved it, um, and the people who got involved were top-notch. And yeah. our models who we worked with on the face, I was just at New York Fashion Week, I saw five or six of them walking down the runways over and over and over again. And That's for me, great. someone who's been in the business, I'm like, I'm glad to see we made the right decisions. Mm -hmm. you know? There's no better validation. Yeah. And you just wrapped season two. When can we expect season three? And what can we expect? Let's hope. I mean, we know how TV works. We're still mm. waiting to get picked up. Um, it went very well. You know, the good news is I'm working on a bunch of other new projects as well. Uh, I just uh, finished a, 
a book with Harper Collins, which will get published in February 2015, really? called Models of Influence. Ooh, tell oh, us more. So it's based on 50 uh, models who reset the course of fashion, and I'll have to come back and give you copies and talk about it with you when it comes out. But Definitely. Please, 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 who are some of the people that will be featured? Uh, well, you know, obviously Naomi Campbell yeah. is one of the. We, we basically span through the uh, the decades from the sort of 1940s to mm. present, and we feature on the models who were pivotal in changing the way we thought about not just clothes and fashion, but they epitomize the era and the generation. And models like, for example, like a Twiggy, who yes. epitomized mm -hmm. protest and rebellion right after the 50s when it was quite austere and glamorous. And mm -hmm. you know, so fashion undulates and changes. And a Kate Moss, for example, who walks, mm -hmm. you know, or, or five foot six of her at a time after Glamazonians who are six foot two. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting. And I talk about why, how, and what was the pivotal moment. I oh, love it. We yes. can't wait for that. <laughs> well, before you step behind the lens, you were actually a face yourself. Talk to us about why you made the leap. Well, you know, sometimes you have to, don't you? Yeah. You know, you know. This I, is still working for me. Right? Honey. You're very sweet. You're very sweet. You know, I was, you know, as a young man, you know, things were very different. It was the late '80s. It was mm -hmm. the early, I, you know, I was a part of that sort of glamazonian movement. Guys were big. Um, I'm six four. I was done. Played rugby all my life. Then came the '90s. Heroin chic, oh, yeah. grunge, androgyny. And I looked at myself and I was like. I, I'm not really androgynous. No. Uh, people pretty much get what I am. You so are all man. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I'm glad you said that. Um, and, you know, and, I, and I sort of thought, I'm not going to throw it away. And I, I went from one side of the camera to the other. And, mm -hmm. and I might have moved over in the mid-90s and moved to New York and set up a studio. And the rest is history. Yeah, and you were also a judge on America's Next Top Model for 17 seasons. That's a wow. long time. It was. Any one memory stand out of being on the show? Um, you know, there are many memories. I had both my children during that time, Aww. you know, top model babies. Uh, you know, <laughs> working with Tyra was extraordinary. You know, talking about someone who was gorgeous, I'd be sitting next to her, I'd look around at her face and be stunned into silence with her beauty. So, wow. you know. I go through that every day, actually. I, I can only imagine. I know what you mean. <laughs> and he's talking about looking in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. That was a good one. <laughs> well, let's oh, end on that note. Yes. But you will come back next year I'm with the book. We it. cannot wait to read it. And thank you so much for being so supportive over the year. You've been awesome, and we love having you here. Yes. So thank you, Nigel. Thank you very much. All right, and we'll be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360.